and we are live. Hi guys, good afternoon or good morning, good evening, wherever you're joining us from today. We hope you are all safe and well in these crazy times. Uh, we have a fantastic uh, webinar lined up for you today with uh, Carlos Martingo. I'm going to let him introduce himself in a moment. Uh, first of all, just a bit of housekeeping and stuff like that as usual. If we can keep uh, microphones on mute throughout the session, it would be great. Uh, in regards to questions, please use the chat box or use the raise hand function to ask the question. Uh, Carlos is happy to take questions throughout the, um, throughout the session providing they are kind of like tied into the particular area we're talking about. As usual, the recordings will be recorded and shared afterwards, uh, and we're in the process of uploading all the webinars now to YouTube. Um, and as described before, uh, we've had some security issues in the past. Uh, these have been um, uh, sort of taken into account, we've upgraded our security, but in the event that there is an issue on this call, then we will abort the call, um, and then we will try to deal with the situation as best we can. So without further ado, I will hand over to Carlos, who's going to introduce himself and then he's going to start sharing his screen. Thank you. Only uh, one second. No problem. Now you can see? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Ricardo and uh, also for English Federation for this invitation. For me, it's a pleasure always to speak about handball and uh, my name is Carlos Martino. Uh, I work in FC Porto as assistant coach and also as coach from the B team and also with a national team under 18 this year, last year under 19. So I've been coach for 10 years and I try to explain a little bit what we make in FC Porto with seven against six. Uh, it's, I think we make it really good. We make it fantastic uh, sometimes. Um, me and Magnus, uh, we are not uh, big fans from uh, seven against six, but um, the truth is uh, seven against six help us a lot. Uh, many times to, to achieve good results. This is the reasons to play seven against six. Uh, sometimes it's only a, ta a tactical option. We, we want to play seven against six as a, like a model of game. Like uh, we have a lot of combinations in attack and the seven against six, it's, we can see like a, one more uh, combination in attack. Of course, it depends if the, the another team play an offensive defense. It's uh, the most easy uh, way to, to play against an offensive def defense. A lot of times we play against here in Portugal uh, against 5 1 or 3 3 or uh, 4 2. And if we start to make uh, 7 against 6, most of the time, the team, the another team, go back and play six zero. Of course, in some momentos of, of the game, it's really important to to play seven against or not to play seven against six. We have key moments during the match where you we want to play seven against six. Um, sometimes, uh, in the end of the game, it could be we, if the 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 level is tight or the tough games, sometimes we can try to play seven against six. So sometimes in the, the beginning of the game or during the first half, only to see what the, the another team prepared to against our seven against six. Uh, sometimes one or two attacks is enough to understand what another team prepare to, to our attack. Of course, Magnus make it really good. This and the, uh, is a, a really a great coach. And sometimes the intuition of the the coach is really important. And understand when the, it's important to try to play seven against six. Sometimes we use seven against six also uh, to control the, the rhythm of the, the, the game because a lot of times or most of the times uh, when we play seven against six we can make longer attacks and we con can control also the physical condition of the players because if we attack more time we can with the control of the ball 
we can control more the rhythm of the game and uh, take the, the control of the match. And as I say before, like uh, the seven against six make part of our game model. I put here, uh, no, the, it's very important in seven against six to play with patience because we, if we don't play with patience and confidence and uh, attack time, sometimes we can lose some easy balls and it's, uh, we don't have any goalkeeper, so we can suffer easy goals. So we must be patient, confidence, and have good attacks and uh, with good uh, time to, to attack. We not be scared to, to suffer a fall. Sometimes it's good to suffer a fall. Of course, the, I speak later about this. The continuity is really important, but uh, I have an, one expression I say, it's better to suffer, to lose one opportunity, good opportunity. Uh, it's, be it's better to lose this opportunity than lose the ball. So uh, sometimes it's not a problem to suffer for. And of course, uh, I think everybody can understand the ball speed is really important because uh, if we don't have a good quality of pass and uh, the, the, the ball don't go fast, we lose some opportunities, opportunities to score. I put here some examples of what we're talking about. Here you can see we can maybe we can take a key uh, can take here the pass to, to the pivot but you don't want to take the risk or you don't want to take the block. Wait, sorry. You can see the ball is going fast, good passes, and here a clear situation of three against two in the left side. And we saw really good the problem here. Another example. The ball goes really fast and we can find a good solution to score. As I tell before, continuity is really important. And sometimes we try to, we find a good solution or a good option, but if we can make a, one more pass, we can find an even better option. Here I write play as close as possible to the defense. I think everybody can understand this. If, if you are too far from the from the, the goal, sometimes you have opportunity, but when you start to run, the defense has time to to regain the position and maybe can make a fall or maybe an attack fall. Try to find an easy shot. Of course, uh, if we play seven against six, we have one player more, so we we need to find. Uh, uh, six meter shot. Uh, of course, sometimes we need to shoot from nine meters, but uh, I think this kind of attack, it's really, the, the goal is to, to find uh, uh, um, a shot from the six meter. And uh, of course, get ready to run back because one player must go direct to the bench to change the goalkeeper. Sometimes and a lot of times we make two changes attack defense and two players is going out. One change with the goalkeeper, another change with uh, one player from the bench. Just some examples. If you can see here, maybe the left wing can go to the goal, or if it's a normal situation of the game, he must go to the goal, but he take the decision not to go, and then we find another option. 
And if you see now, Fabio and Boy start running back. You know, the Antonio is a clearly situation now. I think he miss, but two players are going out, start running. Uh, Fabio don't look, and Boy it's only up to the, the shoulder. See if Antonio scores. And also here. You see, now it's the two players changing. The video stop, or you can see? No. The video stop now. The video stop? Yes. It's freezing. Uh, is it freezing, Bobby, for you as well? I, I, tr I try to put again, OK? Yeah. You see, uh, can you see uh, Rui start running yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good okay. now. Okay. I put to these two examples only to show sometimes we have a good situation to, to score, but we, we make one more pass and try to find a better solution and also to show the players uh, before the shot run back to, to the bench. And uh, Rui make it really good. Sometimes when we lost the, the possession of the ball, he go back and uh, he catch some balls from uh, shots goal to goal and he, he, he can catch some important uh, tries to, to catch the ball. Of course, it's really important, the, the players, we have a really good uh, connection between them. They play together for a long time, some of them, and they have a really, really good connection between them. And uh, I don't know if you see and uh, if you saw in the videos, uh, Hui and Miguel make a lot of fake passes, try to, to pass to the pivot, fake passes to the pivot and simulations with the ball. And uh, it's, this is also really important because the, the defense must close. And sometimes it's a question of uh, one meter to the right or one meter to the left uh, can make a, every difference in, uh, in our time. Understand the timing to anticipate the substitution as uh, I showed before. Of course, we need to, to be ready to, to attack in the both sides of the field. Uh, we felt very comfortable to play in the right side or the left side. For us, it's not a big problem. Sometimes we can have uh, a problem because number two in defense, our German player, he make it really good in defense. And sometimes we, make, we need to make the diagonal cross to change and sometimes this could be a problem, but we don't care so much about that. Here I put some more examples. You saw now we shot from the right wing, playing right to left, and you see uh, Fabio and the, the left wing start running back. If you can see the left wing, it's in 10 meters, ready to change with the goalkeeper. And so, uh, we make, if the wing go, the middle guy defend as first or in the right or in the left side. Uh, the wing go out to change if with the goalkeeper. And now the wing Now we finished in the other side and you, you can see the middle guy start running back to change. So we felt very comfortable. To, it's not a big problem for us to play from right to, to left or left to right. It's not uh, uh, a big problem. Again, uh, it's the same deal I see. What kind of players do, do you need to, to play this system? 
we need three good decision makers. Uh, almost uh, we start the, the first decision is from the, the left back. We have Fabio, he makes it really good, he makes it fantastic as left back. And, uh, but this, uh, the left back takes the first decision. But also the middle back has to take a lot of uh, decisions. Sometimes the, the number five go out and you need to, to put the ball on, in the pivot or in the, the right back or in the, the wing. So uh, we need the, these three guys must be very creative but uh, safe with the ball. They cannot make uh, mistakes. And sometimes, of course, they, they have to take the risk, but we try to reduce as possible this, this risk. Four good scorers. From the wings and from pivots, we need to be uh, good, efficient guys. And the left, uh, the pivot who plays in between one and two, it's not an easy shot for him, but we make it fantastic also. We have a very good uh, uh, efficiency from this, this shot. The wings and the, the other people, it's a more easy shot. It's in the middle of defense. So also, of course, I think everybody can understand we need a fast goalkeeper to, to change and to run fast to, to, the, to the goal. I think uh, now, Maybe the, the goalkeeper is the, the best athlete in the in the in the handball. We change a lot the 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 way we saw the goalkeeper and now you can see we, it's difficult to find a fat goalkeeper as we saw we can saw in the past. Almost uh, you can see the, the Scandinavian goalkeeper, they are fantastic athletes. Uh, almost everybody work a lot um, and understand uh, the goalkeeper need to be a real athlete because the goalkeeper need to take a lot of decisions during the match and sometimes they they know it, they, they need to, to be clear in the head in the, the last moments if and if they have a good physical condition of course in the end of the game they the problem the, it's more easy to, to, to take the, the, the right decisions. Carlos, uh, just before you move along, there's a question uh, yes. which, which I guess you, you saw coming. Uh, the question is related to the fact that you said you want a right-handed right back. Um, yeah. uh, so do you want to explore further on, on, on why? Yes, because the, the, it's, uh, the question is it's more easy to pass the ball for the wing, to the wing. It's the, the, the main question. And Miguel also make it really good. He, go, he can go through between five and six and score a lot of goals between five and six. Good. And he also makes a lot of assists to the right wing. It's easier to, to pass the ball. And maybe he cannot play so open or uh, he must be a little bit closer to the, to the middle guy to get a better way to go don't play so open like a left hander can, can make it but um, it's more the, the reason it's only it's more easier to play to the to the wing that's it that's obviously connected to the fact that in your system you guys start predominantly from the left side yeah we start, uh, in our system we start uh, every time we start with uh, the left back the first decision perfect thank you carlos james hopefully that was a good answer for you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, what can we add from the other team defense? Uh, of course, during the, the week, we study what the, the another team probably can make against us in defense. Uh, almost every team plays 6 0 against 7, 7 against 6. But some teams uh, prefer to, to make more offensive systems. Different kinds of defense, 6-0, 5-1, 3-2, 1, 4-2. Until now, we don't, almost every team plays 6-0. Some teams 5-1 and we play one, one time against 4-2. But I'll show, I'll show you later. What do we make in attack? Or what do we wait for the defense? 6-0, sometimes the, 
Number five in defense, go against the middle guy. The five will start. The number three go against five. Number four close the pivot. And number five come and try to make a fall against the middle guy. I think this is the most uh, uh, common way they they try to 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 stop our attack seven against six. Of course, we prepare something uh, uh, here. You can see my mouse. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Rui must play a little bit closer to Fabio, and Fabio uh, take sometimes the decision to pass to Miguel. It's not an easy pass, and sometimes this wing can try to steal the ball. But Fabio, at this time, as I spoke before, we, we don't be scared to, to take a fall, and sometimes it's not a problem to take a fall, okay? But I think this is the most common way and almost every team try to make it try to make it like this. I don't show the last video. I think it is. Okay. Yes. It's the same, the same strategy to try to stop us. Sometimes they try to play with block and offer the, sh the shoot to, to Fabio. In this case, we have Christopans, 2 meter 14, and they play a little bit, a little bit more defensive here, and offer. Of course, they have coordination between block and uh, the sh and uh, defense. If you can see the goalkeeper go to the first corner, and some some defense try to make it and offer the the shot to Fabio. Sometimes number three go against left back, try to reduce the decision time of uh, the left back. You see, number three go against number uh, against the left back, and sometimes this player try to go against the, the middle back guy to steal the ball or to to make fall. And uh, I think in this case Miguel make it really good go and start to run running without ball and can go inside the defense yeah this is the most common uh, way they they play against us if they play 5-1 now alexis don't i think he don't understand they change the defense he's not well placed we play uh, Pivot between one and two, and another pivot more or less in the line of the second corner, the second and here in the seven meters. But Alexis changed the position right now. Now it's in the right position. We try to play like this against 5 1. I will go direct number three or between two and three to uh, apply the, the, the defense. To take a decision to or number three go out or number three uh, two go out or nobody go out and as you can see in this side is a big situation and also for to the pivot sometimes we have a security pass the middle guy stay uh, down to the left back as a security pass not so dangerous but uh, as i tell before Sometimes we need a security pass only to don't lose the ball or don't take the risk. Here we have some more examples. If you can see, Benfica make it a lot of times this 
and I think also Mon play and Kilche play against us 5 1. If you can see the, the front guy, when the Fabio start to make the attack, go down and close the, this line of passes to the pivot. I think I can put it again. You see, Fabio start to attack, and then the guy in front of defense try to close this line pass to the pivot. It's the same, and here we can find another solution. This is maybe the most common uh, play between Fabio and the line player. Here they play 5 1, but number two go out. So we have three against two in the, le the left side, and Fabio can find the free player. So it's the, it's the first time we play against 4 2. It's, uh, I put, uh, I, we don't have so many attacks against 4 2. For us, it's uh, a little bit surprise. So we take we can take some falls before and understand what happened in front of us and then theoretic uh, it's more easy to play against offensive defense uh, with seven players in attack but of course sometimes uh, we are not expecting this so we need some time to, to Maybe it's only to look in front and see what happened because it's a lot of space to, to play one, two, three, four, five against four in the entire field. Yeah. And so we can find a solution. If you see here, Miguel take the decision to pass to the wing, and it's a fantastic pass. But if you can see in the right side, the look to, to the space we have in this side, and also always the same question: look, the, you know, we have lot, in this game we have a lot of problems with, with injuries. We play with the right hand um, right wing. If you can see, the ball is still in the, the hand of Miguel and both start running back. Yeah, it's a question of patience and try to find a better option. I think Leo in this game, he missed the last shot from the right wing. So we don't go to the goal and we can try, we can find a, a fantastic solution on the left side with a lot of angle and we can stop. Now I have uh, some exercise, of course. I think everybody knows this kind of exercise, but it's, um, some exercise we make like a warm up in the practice. We try to to make uh, almost in every training the decision maker so with uh, some easy exercise. And I think it's not. I have nothing new to to show you. It's everybody work like this. I think we put the balls here, play three against two in the left side. It's a uh, uh, put the, the left back to take the decision and this side after we finish in the left side we play two against one in the right side I think it's nothing new about this we can see direct application in the game
students to come outside. Another. In this game, Meshkov, uh, I think the our left wings made like uh, twelve shots. I think they take the, the decision to let our left wing to to shoot. And sometimes happen they they shoot one player and let the player, if they trust the goalkeeper in one position, they they let the, this player. This could be another solution of the exercise. We also can make it the left back start a little bit inside and then go out with a block from the pivot. It's another solution. The pass to the pivot behind the back. Fabio make it really good. Sorry. The videos are going good? Yeah. Okay. They have the usual um, breaks, but okay. because you're going to share the presentation after. Okay, but it's not, not a big deal, no? No, we can absolutely see the messaging okay. fast, so it's absolutely fine. No, I think I lost something. Yes. I want only to show you. To Two against one in the right side. Five will sometimes shot, shoot, you can shoot. And now I think it's the, the situation two against one in the right side. As we practice a lot of time as a warm up, you see it's two against one in the right side. The second is the exercise is to the middle back can play here. We put the ball with the left uh, back, start with the ball, the number three go against him. We pass the ball to the middle guy, who try to play as close as possible, as I speak before, inside nine meters sometimes. And here, we, take, we can take the decision. This guy, the number three, can go back and recover the position. So uh, the main goal is the middle guy take the decision or can go inside or pass to the pivot. If you have any doubts, you can ask about this. Here, okay. Number three, go against the left back. Uh, the middle guy, take the ball, and then he can pass to the pivot. This exercise I put, it's uh, try to make always progressions between the, the exercise and try to grow up from the exercise. I put only the six exercises, but you can make a lot of this this kind of exercise we see this before the middle guy can go here is the same but we put more defense in defense and more attacks. We can play here two against one. If they cannot pass and this guy can recover, we try to play here three against two. Or, uh, but it's the beginning is four against three. One, two, three, four against three. I think everybody can understand this. It's not a big deal. Here the pivot changed the block and this guy can pass the ball, the ball to the pivot or go between five and six or pass to the wing. Or sometimes can happen, we can, this guy go against the middle guy and this guy try to skate and pass the ball for the right back or for the wing. It's nothing new, I think, for you.
on the air. Alexis take the block. And Quidge take the decision to shoot. You can see block and Quidge take the decision to shoot, but if you can see it's a clear situation in the right side. Here it's the same, but we play five against four. And number five go, and I, I spoke about that before. I don't put here any practice, any... And here it's the same, but we put one more pivot inside, and we play seven against this, six against five. And finally, we play seven against six, six like in the, in the match. Of course, you can make a lot of more exercise here. We can play three against two in the right side here with the pivot. You can imagine the, how many exercises you can make it to. Some notes. You can create some rules for each exercise. For example, you can put the maximum of, of passes. You can put the rule to only to make two passes or three passes or to oblige the, the, the player to, to take the decision before. If he, he dribble, count as a pass. Try to always create some competition between attack and defense. I think in the, for everybody, it's really important to have competition in the practice. I think the levels of concentration and the intensity go, grow a lot if we play with competition between attack and defense. In uh, the last exercise, we can put uh, if the left back shoot, and we are we can change the direction of the attack or left to, to right or right to left, and we can change the the player to uh, to come out only to to practice what we make in the in the, in the during the match. Yeah, it means something here. I put, uh, I think uh, later I add here, I put, we, we make it really good. I think we play the seven against six, one of the best of the world. A lot of people say we are the best of the world to play seven against six, but sometimes we make mistakes, of course. Yeah, we are not perfect. And of course, we also know to play how to play seven, uh, six against six. As I speak before, as I tell before, uh, seven against, against six is like a combination attack. But we also play six against six, and we make it good. Here we are in doubt to play seven against six or play six against six. You can see the score and the time. It's the last attack in kill for us. Is uh, for us we cannot say if we get draw in kill. It's a fantastic result for us. So we are a little bit scared to play seven against six in the last attack. And if you can see, we are playing with two pivots because we have some doubts to change the goalkeeper or no. And to Magnus take the decision not to play seven against six. And, yeah. 
this car with two pivots without wing. That is a question uh, Magnus and asked a lot of times what we can improve in the power seven again six if EHF let us to improve if they don't stop with the rule and uh, what can we do we, uh, we have some another teams who play the different way seven against six we can try to put the pivots in different uh, positions change the player who takes the first decision where is a, a shooter in the middle to take number four the block and the, the middle guy can shoot a lot a lot of times we have good situations situations where, where we can shoot in the middle play with four first line players without only one pivot and uh, with four backs uh, like a left back two middle guys and a right back and start with a, a fake movement in the beginning of the attack like a, a cross between the middle guy with a pivot or start to open the defense with uh, some movements before start to take the decisions i have i take some examples from some teams we are i think it's the if this is in the olympic games in 2016 in brazil Denmark play a lot of time uh, seven against six. The pivots are in the same position as we play, but they start with a change of position between the, the middle guy and the left back. And then here they play. It's just some ideas we can get from another teams or the, this rule is not uh, maybe we can find new solutions because this rule is I think uh, four years or five years only and I think we can improve a lot so try to find a new solution this is Gui or Gui. they play here in Portugal three years ago and if you can see they play with four backs Two middle guys. This guy is a left-hander, and uh, they have some. I like the way they play. They make a cross here, another cross, and this guy start to run out. And if you can see, uh, that this time he shoot, but if you can see later, they have some. Again, they win in the right side. They, they, they missed the pass, but I think it's interesting to see different way to play. Here, if you can see, they make a fake cross. With a pivot, and they block, and it's only some ideas. What can we do in the future? We think also the defense start to make something new, maybe against us. Here, the same, the fake cross with the pivot. Uh, here is Croatia. You can see in the, the last European Championship, they play with the pivot between two and three and four and five. And most of the time they play with Dubniak in the middle. My opinion is Croatia play like this uh, to make longer attacks also because they don't have so many players to, to change and i think they have really long attacks and uh, 
if you can see, if you pay attention to Dovniak, he made a lot of fake passes to the pivot. And it, of course, you know, he's one of the best players in the world. It's only funny to see they, they play a different way. But I think the principles are the same. Patience, patience, try to find a better solution. A lot of times make another pass. Uh, Croatia a lot of times is Dubnia could take the decision to shoot in the middle, of course. You think that's the main difference between your system and the, the Croatian one, which is yeah. you obviously allow the first decision or the main decision to be from the left back, whilst yeah. they allow the main decision to be from the playmaker. And maybe that's why Sindrich is playing as left back, because they don't need the shooter there, they don't need that kind of danger to start. Yeah, and they put the pivot here to take uh, this guy, take a pitch, or this guy, these two guys, they must take care of the middle guy, and they play with the left, uh, left hander as right back, yeah. he can play more open. So if this guy uh, close to the pivot and this guy must close to the pivot because he make a lot of fake passes to the pivot. If they have a quick pass to the to the back, they can go and play two against one in the, the, the open areas. You can see where the, the backs are playing really open. Uh, Six against six, of course, it's really important to play really open. You see, it's a fake pass to the pivot. If if he can pass here, it's not easy to the defense. Carlos. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I have a questions for you. Your opinion in this system, seven with six. The pivot all the time stay in the in one or two, left or right, doesn't matter. In our system, we we only play with the pivot between one of the pivots between one and two. For us, it's more comfortable to play with one pivot between one and two, and another pivot play between four and five. It's our system. I don't say it's better or worse. It's our system. Sometimes I try to stay, uh, I, I play in 2-3, two, 2-3, three, two, three, left and right. And in this situation, open the, the area zone, left or right. Yeah, uh, as I said, I think it's, if you have a, a, a good decision maker in the middle, I, my opinion, it's also too difficult for the, to, to the defense, of course. If you can see this difference, number five, try to close, not, you don't want to let an easy pass from this guy to this guy. His, his work, you, see, you can see the, the foot, the left foot is a little bit up, so don't let the, the, the middle guy make an easy pass. Of course, this wing also can make it some, something uh, to put this player a little bit uh, um, behind. So if you receive the ball in the 11 meters or 10 meters, this guy has time to, to get the position again. So this guy also has an important work here in defense. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's, uh, of course, it's, uh, we have a player more in attack. Of course, somebody is alone. Uh, our job is to find where is the, the player alone. And it's, uh, I think it's interesting to, we play seven, our seven against six. My opinion, it's not boring. Like I don't like this this way to play seven against six from Croatia. Of course, they have some success. They are top players, but um, our uh, seven against six, we can find always different solutions for different problems. The the defense can exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I think it's now. Okay, this is in the semi final. 
I think everybody saw this match. Uh, the Croatians are really tired, and I think they take this decision to play with seven to take care of the players. It's my opinion, and it's what I think. Yeah, this is uh, the con conclusions. Our players really love to play this season because they know they make it good and uh, they know they can find a uh, lot of solutions and they felt really comfortable to play in this system. And also, I think it's really important uh, for them. Uh, they are free to, to make and to take decisions in this system. And I think every, you know, some players don't want or don't like to take decisions. They like like uh, robots or like uh, machines. But uh, I think the, the top players like to have some uh, free rules and creativity. And I think this system, it's, uh, it's good for this kind of players. And this I put some. Uh, this only is from EHF, and a lot of uh, different coaches talk about our seven against six, and also the national team of Portugal play seven against six with a lot of success, and we we'll make it really good. And that's it. And um, I hope you enjoy. I don't open any Pandora box. But I think I don't have. Super. We don't. We don't have uh, any secret. It's uh, the quality of the players who and the, who take the decision is the players. So if we have good players, we can play seven against six. And without bad players, it's not so easy to play seven against six. Carlos, uh, first of all, thank you for that. That was a great presentation. Uh, we have a few questions to throw back at you. Um, we would ask uh, people if you have questions to raise your hand instead of just opening your mic and speak, because there's uh, around well, there's a lot of people, and if everyone decides to do the same, then it's going to be a problem. Um, starting by the ones who've uh, asked a few questions on the chat, uh, there's a couple of simple ones to start with in terms of common mistakes. Uh, when you're practicing seven to six with your players, um, what's the most common mistakes you have to correct? Is it about their ability to make decision, decisions, or is it around their technical execution of passes or shots? No, uh, of course. I think we, our goal is to, to take the right decision. Not maybe with the younger age. Of course, we have to to be to take care of another thing with. Uh, like a top players. As I said, it's uh, like a warm up for the practice. We take this kind of exercise. I, I put some examples of it's only to, to put the brain, start working for the practice. And of course, we, we make this kind of exercise um, as a warm up and sometimes as a warm up for the goalkeepers because we have some easy shots. And uh, uh, but the main goal is the, the tactical situation, not the technical situation. Using the, ta the tactical bit you just described, there's another question uh, uh, around what informs the decision in the game of using 76. So is it something you plan before the game, saying we're going to start on the minute 10, or is it something you, you apply because you feel it's necessary during the game? Yeah, uh, we don't plan the, which time we, we start uh, and yeah. how many times we play. It's, uh, sometimes we, we can play 15 minutes, uh, seven against six, but sometimes we make one attack or two attacks. If, uh, um, and as I said, Magnus is brilliant to, to take care of that. He has a really good feeling when he thinks it's important to play seven and of course, sometimes we play, we make it three times and we lost three balls, and then we go back and play six against six. We are not 
uh, perfect, as I said uh, before. But uh, almost in every game, we try to, to play 7 against 6. Uh, also, with, we have some easy games in our championship. And in almost every game, we play 7 against 6. Uh, it's not a question of a lack of respect for another team. If we are winning by 20 or some cases we are winning by 10 and we make 7 against 6, it's not a question of lack of, of respect. And I think every, everybody can understand that. It's a way to play and it's a, our model of play. And, and also in this game, we can practice uh, with different problems uh, against uh, different opponents. And I think it's important in each game we can play a little bit seven against it. Thank you. I've got a couple more for me. I don't know if you have any. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I had one from Martin, uh, and I hope I get it right. But he's asking, have you been um, making statistics um, of your time using seven against six, uh, and does it support your kind of uh, yeah your decisions around that? Uh, yes, we have statistics. I I spoke for myself. I. I'm not a number guy. I'm not a fan of numbers. Uh, of course, it's important, and sometimes you have a feeling that you are making it really good, and sometimes this is not the, the, the truth. But we have statistics. We work with sideline, and uh, now we start to improve our achievements in sideline, and we have statistics also with sideline. and. Sometimes it's really interesting to see the statistics because when you think you are making it really good, and but the numbers don't say you make it really good because uh, it's a game, and during the game, or during the match, uh, for example, if you are uh, 25 25 and you miss all attacks seven against six, and you take the risk to play seven against six in the last attack and you score. Okay, the statistics not good, but seven against six solve our problem in the last attack and we, we win. So the numbers in the in the sports, if, of course, it's important and of, of course it's uh, um, really important and we take care of that. But sometimes uh, we get out of the box and we win without statistics and and we don't care about statistics. Thanks, Carlos. Any, Bobby, do you have any, any more? That's it from me. No. There's a couple okay. more coming to the group. Carlos, I've got a couple, a couple more. Uh, the first one is the percentage. Um, so imagine your microcycle in a week. Mm -hmm. How long do you dedicate for specific 7v6 work um, and everything else? Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you if you believe it or not, but we <laughs> don't take, we don't take uh, a long time to to try to practice seven against six. Yeah. We maybe we make uh, more exercise like the decision maker three against two or four against three or six against five or five against four. What you want uh, in different areas of the field, but uh, ex specific seven against six. We don't uh, take a long time during the the, the week. Uh, uh, we have so many games and uh, so many travels. These two years, we don't have so many so much time to practice. So sometimes we only make one hour of practice, and the, we we use the the practice to recover or to prepare exactly. We take care more of defense than the, the other parts of the game. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, there's another question uh, from Gonzalo. I'm going to rephrase it a bit because he, he, he's focusing specifically on the, on the Portugal under 18 team. He's asking if you use the 76 there. And if not, is it because you don't think you have the, the, the right players? But my question would be a bit more broad, I think, because we're, we're talking about several age groups. Uh, and I would say, what's your thought about using 7v6 uh, in, in young age groups, as in under 14, under 16, under 18? What do you think? I think it's a solution. 
we can have a problem with uh, if we only play seven against six. The players can lose some quality, like to play man and man, uh, man against man or two against two. Or but I believe also they can help uh, the player to take a better decision to play three against two or three against uh, two, three against two or four against three. I don't have uh, anything against to play seven against six. I have, I am against to play only seven against six. Yes, uh, I think this is not uh, the right decision to take, to only to play one in one system and, and the youth age. But I think it's everything can understand that. Uh, and ball, the principles of handball is to play one against one or two against two or three against three or four against four, uh, six against six. And um, I'm not against to play seven against six in the year stage. It's the amount of time they use it. Yeah. You? Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Bobby, is there anything else from your uh, side? Not, no more questions from me. Uh, nothing from my side as well. Um, I think we could... Uh, close it. I think Carlos needs to have some time with the family as well. It's his day off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we, we do appreciate that. Carlos, on, on, on my behalf and on England Handel's behalf, um, this, was, this was great. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed as much as, uh, as I did and learned uh, as much as I did. Uh, you're obviously my friend, so it's a pleasure to have friends uh, helping us and mainly friends who are experts on the subject and like handball as much as, as I do. So on, on my personal view, thank you very much for this. I hope you enjoy it. For me, it's a pleasure. And if you have some questions, I don't put here my email or if you need to to ask more something, you can take contact with Ricardo and Ricardo. Yeah, contact I'll pass it on. Thanks, Carlos. Um, we will be sending out the presentation and the recording uh, as per usual. And we send out Carlos's contact details so you can contact him with more questions. Thank you so much for joining us, Carlos. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, we have our last webinar in this series on Friday with Vera Lopez looking at the uh, an overview analysis of women's handball. Uh, so it's to be a cracker. So please feel free to join us at three o'clock on Friday. We will be announcing some more webinars uh, over the coming weeks. Guys, have a nice afternoon and we will see you soon. Thank you very much.